Agar art has become a fun way for scientists to blend their loves of science and art together. The history of Agar art goes back almost 100 years, beginning with Alexander Fleming. He's most well known for discovering penicillin and the lysosome enzyme, but he was also a self-taught artist who loved to paint. He was even known to let patients pay him in painting lessons. He experimented with painting with microorganisms in his laboratory. He would sketch out an image on an agar plate using a loop and different microorganisms as the pigments, inoculating each section with precise timing in order to ensure the colonies all matured at the same time, but before they all began colliding together as they continued to grow since there was no way to preserve his work during his time. Most pieces today are created and then frozen in time by being filled with acrylic resin. He enjoyed finding new species of microorganisms and using them as new pigments. And even today, almost 100 years later, microbiologists and biochemists are still finding and creating new species and pigments like fluorescent proteins. The materials used today are not much different than in Fleming's time. Most agar art today is still made with bacteria and fungus, but decades of experimenting have allowed microbiologists to find unique properties in different species and strains. Artists will use the characteristics of the microorganisms to their best advantage. For example, the small dots and the eyeball in the peacock are a specific gut bacterium that produces very small and distinct colonies. Colors can also be very unique in microorganisms and can vary by strain or subspecies. The same microbe is used in the peacock tail feathers and the sunflowers, but the multi-drug resistant strain creates the yellow of the sunflowers while the other creates the white in the peacock's tail feathers. In the sea ray image, the multiple shades are different species of the same fungus that change depending on the nutrients present in the media. Media can be used to change the background coloring, like in this chromogenic plate. And like with the ray from earlier, it can also influence the color of the microorganisms. Yellow BPA is used in a Lobos picture to cause the colonies to develop to shades of dark gray and black because they're reacting to selective agents in the media. The ombre effect seen in the right piece is because the media contains lactose. E. coli can ferment lactose, but it differs in strains. So the fermentation, when exposed to the presence of neutral red pH indicator, shows the differing patterns of fermentation in the strains. Most of the art produced today is bacteria and fungus, and I only managed to find one piece that actually involved a virus. This 2015 entry to the American Society for Microbiologists annual art contest is baker's yeast, infected with a virus and then etched into the images of virus particles. The rest of the media was then filled with a competing strain of the yeast. The virus infected strain produces a toxin that produce, prevents the growth of the other strain, creating the voids. The dark blue lines are due to the dead yeast cells that got a little too close to the toxin. The annual art contest held by the American Society for Microbiologists is one of the biggest collections of agar art. The first competition was held in 2015, and the entries each year have become more numerous and more intricate. With the restriction of access to labs and traditional materials due to COVID-19, the 2020 contest was opened up to any type of art and received 189 submissions, including traditional plates and other forms of art like poetry, sculpture, sewing, and videos. Some of the art pieces ended up with unintended aspects, like the yellow flowers seen here where the artist grew the original image from cultures collected from the surface of flowers in their home. But due to the non-sterile conditions of their living room, it became contaminated by white fungi, giving the effect of snowfall. Many artists will use their piece to spread awareness of drug resistance, common infections, or environmental change and impact. The desert image is the artist's representation of the many inner working pieces of urinary tract infections that are common in his country. The sand, camel, and the date trees are not just representative of the dry and arid conditions, but are made from colonies of the most common types of bacteria responsible for UTIs and UTI complications. 
And he also chose a media that is typically the one used in isolation and enumeration of bacteria and urine to tie them together to his theme. Another example is the coral arrangement here, where the team used their piece to draw attention to the microbes often found in coral reefs and the impact of climate change bleaching coral and the contaminated water introducing pathogens to the ecosystem. Many of the artists are professional microbiologists, but a growing number are students. They share their art through social media and some even teach workshops online. A few professors have even begun integrating agar art into the classroom and in lessons of undergraduate and elementary and secondary school levels in order to encourage and excite future biologists and the beauty of microorganisms and science. 